with another video. If you follow me on Snapchat or Instagram, you know that I've been planning this video for like the past few weeks now and it's finally here and I'm really excited for you guys to see this video. But basically, I'm just gonna show you how to create your own beginner skincare routine. So if you're like a beginner to skincare or you're just like overwhelmed with like all the steps and like how many different skincare products there are out there, this video is for you. Just a quick little disclaimer that I always put before my skincare videos. I am not a qualified professional. I'm actually not a professional at all. I never went to school for dermatology or chemical engineering. I literally am not a professional. However, all the things that I've learned were from materials written by actual qualified professionals. So if you have a problem with what I'm saying, you can go over to them and tell them that they're wrong. Okay? But anyway, let's get started. So this bare minimum basic beginner skincare routine that I've put together for you guys, it focuses on the necessities to keep your skin healthy, glowy, hydrated, um, as clear as it can be. But also keep in mind that everyone's biochemistry is different, so what works for me may not necessarily work for you. It's There is no secret formula for clear skin. Um, different things are just gonna work for different people. I know you guys hate hearing that, but it's just the truth. Here's my philosophy when it comes to skincare. One size never fits all. So to give you guys like a little real world example, Bruce Lee created a martial art called Jeet Kune Do, which is based on the principle that you should try everything and then only keep and use the things that work for you because what works for someone else is not gonna work for you. So if you're a skinny five foot two person and you're gonna fight a, a big muscular uh, person who's six foot four, the techniques and the moves that the tall person uses are gonna be different than the techniques that the smaller person uses. So that's kind of my philosophy when it comes to skincare. If you have oily acne prone skin, you're gonna use different products and approach your skincare routine differently than someone who has dry skin, you know what I mean? So there is no such thing as a secret formula. One size does not fit all and you're going to have to try everything to see what your skin does and doesn't like. So first things first, and this should always be the most important part of your skincare routine is to remove your makeup and cleanse your skin. And this can be achieved by doing what's called a double cleanse. So the first part of the double cleanse is using an oil-based cleanser and an oil-based cleanser will essentially just like melt off all the makeup and remove like all the impurities, um, excess sebum that's sitting on your face or like even sunscreen because oil cleansers are really the only thing that can remove SPF from your face if you're using a like, physical SPF. And then the next part of the double cleanse is to actually cleanse your skin. So the first part was to remove anything sitting on your skin. And then the second part is to actually like clean and wash your skin. So using a low pH water-based cleanser will not only cleanse your skin, but it will also protect your skin barrier. Another cool thing about using a low pH cleanser is that there really is no need to use a toner if you cleanse your skin correctly. So that kind of eliminates an entirely new product or step that you don't really have to purchase. So exfoliating is also super important, especially if your main skin concerns are uneven skin tone, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, um, dullness, fine lines, etc. So there are two types of exfoliators. There are physical exfoliators and then there are chemical exfoliators. And physical exfoliators are like physical scrubs that remove dead skin cells. So these are like sugar scrubs, or like, you know, facial brushes, those are both examples of physical exfoliators. However, most people with sensitive skin find that those are too harsh for their skin. I don't personally find that they're too harsh on my skin. However, I just don't personally like using physical exfoliators too much just because I feel like I get better, like way better results using chemical exfoliators anyway. Which brings me to my next point. So chemical exfoliators come in two different forms. So the first is AHAs, which stands for alpha hydroxy acids, and BHAs, which stands for beta hydroxy acids. The type of chemical exfoliator that you need is entirely contingent upon your skin type or your skin concerns. But before I get into that, let me give you a little bit information about both types of chemical exfoliators just so that you have a better understanding of why you need what for your skin. So AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids 
um, focus primarily on like the surface of the skin to remove dead skin cells and reveal fresh, new, brighter skin. So AHAs help with skin concerns like whiteheads, um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, sun damage, uneven skin tone, dullness, fine lines, and things like that. So examples of AHAs are glycolic acid, there's kojic acid, lactic acid, citric acid. My skin personally really likes glycolic acid, kojic acid, and tretinoin, but you might need to try a, like, different ingredients just to see which ones work best for you because what works for me may or may not work for you. So BHAs or beta hydroxy acids focus primarily under the skin. So these are best for like cystic acne or you know like those pimples that you feel growing under the skin. Though BHAs are best for that type of acne because they just go like deep down into your pores, they remove excess sebum, they force everything out and they just unclog your pores. So BHAs are great for people with oily and acne prone skin and BHAs also like have anti-inflammatory properties so they can actually like reduce inflammation and reduce redness as well, which I think is really cool. Um, an example of a BHA is salicylic acid and you'll find that that is an ingredient that is present in a lot of like acne, um, skincare products. If you do have acne prone skin and you find that BHAs aren't really working for your skin, you can try ingredients like tea tree oil or benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide has personally always kept my skin clear, like always, it's always worked. Um, however, a lot of people with sensitive skin might find that it's too drying. I never personally experienced that, but again, you know, you're just gonna have to try and see what works best for you. So the next step is to moisturize, and I feel like this step is pretty self-explanatory, but it is super important to keep your skin hydrated and to protect that skin barrier. And it's important to do this both during the day and at night. And no, I don't care if you have oily skin. I have the oiliest skin on the planet, and I still need to keep my skin hydrated, or else my skin will overproduce oil, and I'll look like an oily hot mess. Well, more than I already do, anyway. So if you have oily skin, I would recommend you get an oil-free moisturizer. They'll be very lightweight and they won't give you any of that like faux dewiness that cream moisturizers do because if you have oily skin, you know that any product that already makes you look dewy, like it's just not gonna be good for you throughout the rest of the day. If you have dry skin, I would recommend getting a cream-based moisturizer or using like an oil of some sort. They will moisturize your skin and give you like that nice healthy glow and it'll help keep your like dry patches at bay. So if you have combination skin, meaning that you ha are dry in some areas and oily normally around the T-zone, it is recommended to use a cream-based moisturizer for all those dry, those dry patches and then to just control oil um, in your T-zone or wherever else you get oily. Then the last step is SPF. So sun protection is super important. I don't care what race you are. The sun definitely doesn't care what race you are. Sure, skin cancer is way more common in people who have fairer skin. However, a lot of tan, brown, dark-skinned people are under the assumption that they are invincible or immune to it, and that is just simply not true. I don't know if you can see this, Maybe it's a little bit more visible in like some of my other videos, but I have this yellow spot right here in the middle of my eyeball. And it's literally there because when I was a child, I played outside all the time, but I never, literally never wore sunglasses. So this is literally damage from the sun. So if simply being outside can damage your eyes, imagine what the sun can do to your skin cells. The only reason why some people tan instead of burn in the first place is because that melanin production is actually a response to sun exposure. So our skin actually tans itself to protect us from being burned. And actually, according to the FDA, the extra melanin um, in tan skin only provides like an extra SPF of like two or four, which is way below the like recommended daily minimum of an SPF 15 or SPF uh, 30. So do with that information what you will. Incorporate a nice SPF into your skincare routine and wear it every single day. And even if your only exposure to the sun is while you're driving in your car, like on your way to work or school or whatever, guess what? You're still being exposed to the sun. So it is just very important to wear SPF 
all the time. And if you're going to be outside a lot, um, make sure that you're applying it every two hours. If you are a tan, brown, or dark person of color, you may notice that some sunscreens give you like this ghostly or like ashy color called white cast. And white cast actually comes from the ingredients zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And these are physical sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens don't include those ingredients, so that's why I just prefer chemical sunscreens over physical sunscreens because they don't give me a white cast, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to look ashy. You're just gonna have to try different sunscreens and see which ones work best for you. And I actually recommend getting samples from like Sephora because that way you can like try them out without having to commit to a purchase. So that is my recommended basic like beginner skincare routine. This basic skincare routine might reverse damage. It might help restore your skin barrier and it will help to further protect your skin from the sun. So try this routine for a couple of weeks, see if it makes any difference to your skin. Sometimes less is more, but it's also very important to be educated about the ingredients that you're using on your skin and why you should buy product A over product B, you know, like why should you buy this product instead of this product? So that's kind of why I wanted to create this video so it can like kind of help you guys understand and kind of navigate through all these different skincare products, like thousands of different skincare products on the market right now. And just keep the philosophy of Bruce Lee in mind when you're creating your skincare routine. What works for me may not work for you, but whatever works for you in your situation, is what you should use and then just forget everything else that everyone else is doing. Only focus on what works for you. Thank you for your philosophy, Bruce Lee. So I hope this video kind of helped you guys navigate through all the different types of skincare available. Um, if you like this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you guys next time.